Obviously, Framing Britney Spears is the most talked about documentary of the week. And obviously, I had to write a song parody about it. Look at her songs, that toxic beat. Wouldn't you think her inflection is neat? Wouldn't you think she's the girl, girl from the lucky song? Look at her gram, eyeliner's bold. At first we all thought they looked dead and cold. Looking around there you'd think, sure, she burned down her gym. She sang hit me and stronger and crazy. And you can't forget about Gimme More. You want chart topping songs? She's got 20. But who cares? No big deal. She wants more. She wants to be where the people are. And we want to see, want to see her dancing, clapping our hands to that. What do you call it? Oh, beat. Conservatorship, it won't get you far. Under her dad, there'll be no more dancing. Her dad's what we call a... What's that word again? Sleaze. Sometimes she runs. Sometimes she hides. Most days she's scared and just stays inside. We're saying free. Her name's Brittany. Oops, free our girl. This is the Rocky Rundown, where you get to learn a little bit about my week. So everyone is talking about it, the documentary Framing Britney Spears. I watched it, and of course I had no idea what a conservatorship was. How shocked are all of us that white dude Jamie Spears got away with all this and is continuing to get away with all this. Oh my god, my jaw's on the floor, I'm so surprised. I'm not surprised. Part that gave me the clearest perspective about what's going on in that family was when they interviewed her brother. Drew Plotkin interviewed him and said, this is a direct quote from her brother. The women in this family are very, very strong-minded and have their own opinion and they want to do what they want to do. And as much as I admire that as a guy and being like one of two guys in this entire family, it kind of sucks, man. I'm not going to lie. To which Drew Plotkin responded, kind of constitutional. He was meaning having rights, even though you're a a silly little woman, is constitutional. He shut that shit down. It was so good. And I'm also obsessed with the paparazzi guy basically denying the fact that he was asked to leave Britney alone. And his response was, yeah, she said leave me alone, but like for the day. My man, you were part of the problem. It's wild. I love all of you so much, and for that reason, I'm going to save the few of you who haven't texted me about my thoughts on Justin Timberlake the time and energy by telling you my opinions on Justin Timberlake's role in this. First and foremost, let's all take a breath and stop giving all past mistakes the same weight. Let's all take a look at our 20-year-old selves and think about who we owe an apology to. I thought so... Justin has since put out a statement apologizing, which is what the people wanted. We want to hear him apologize. We want to know that he's grown and learned from the error of his ways. If you are still bitching about him, I promise you there are bigger issues that you can direct your energy for 2021 towards. Besides being mad at him about this, I mean, have you guys seen Bad Teacher? That's where our anger towards Justin should be going. He fucking crushed it in Palmer, though. Watch that on Apple TV if you haven't. It was great. This Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to be doing something for the first time ever called Wild Wednesdays. I'm interviewing the hosts of the Before Bed podcast. So that'll be this Wednesday on Instagram Live at 9 p.m. Also, I had the privilege of being a guest on the This Week is Dumb podcast. Shout out to Garrett and Yuri. You can follow them at This Week 
week is dumb on Instagram and check out their podcast. Not just my episode, all their episodes. They are really funny guys and I appreciate them being so cool with me. This week, my guest is a dear friend. His name is Mehdi Barachian. We have shared the stage quite literally over 250 times. I've had a lot of laughs with this guy and his wild word was cops. Now, if your little booty cheeks clinched up when I said the word cops, it's time to take out your wallet and make a donation. Might I suggest the Equal Justice Initiative, Fair Fight Action. You know it's the right thing to do. And I want to thank each and every one of you again for tuning in. If you haven't done so already, please like, share, subscribe to the podcast. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Wild Nights with Rocky. On Twitter at Wild Nights Pod. Thank you for those who've left reviews on Apple. It does make a difference and I appreciate you. And now, enjoy my Wild Night conversation with Mehdi. You're welcome. Thank you for doing the podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to have you. So it's a privilege to have you on because you are one of my close friends. Yes, yes. I'm so excited. I I listened to the Langston episode and I loved it. Yeah. I especially loved hearing my own name because I'm a narcissist. So that was really fun. (laughs) I think I am too. I think if you have a podcast, you have to be a narcissist, right? Oh, 100%. Oh, why do you think I've I've started, I've thought thought of starting a podcast too. Okay. Well, everybody's waiting. (laughs) Everyone's waiting. What what are you going to call it? Nobody's waiting. Literally, no one's waiting. I'm waiting. What would I call it? Um, uh oh, with Medi. I okay, don't know. Perfect. First thought I had. Um, it's dropping on iTunes. Let's say in two months, we'll give you two, two months. months. <laughs> two months. I'm gonna start having accountability meetings for it. I'll do the first one and then no others. Yes. Um. Now, <laughs> Medi, before quarantine, mm. you and I would see each other every single week, sometimes twice a week. We were on the same improv team. I can't remember now if we were on the team for five. Four or five years? How long was Hero Complex together? I don't even know. I think five years probably. Five years, right? That's yeah. a long time to do improv with someone. Yeah, and we also met up a bunch to write a pilot together too. We wrote a pilot and yeah. we succeeded at writing the pilot and then... And then that's it. Coronavirus <laughs> happened. Yeah, that's right. We had a that's bunch right. of plans before February and then everybody's life kind of went to shit. And then it felt weird to put out a pilot that wasn't about COVID. Which also, you know, what's funny about that is that we say that, but I also wouldn't write something about coronavirus because nobody wants to fucking see that. We want to get the hell away from it. Right. Like, I don't want to come home, not even come home. I don't want to be home and then be, you know, hypothetically done at five o'clock with my home day Mm -hmm. and then watch people staying at home because it's COVID. Right. Yeah. No, that's true. I think the other day we put on HBO and there was some TV show. It's like something... I don't know have you seen it it's like something like locked in or locked up and no people their experiences during yeah no I don't want to see that because they have nothing else to air they got no other ideas yeah it is consume it is all consuming I don't know how you've been I'm impressed that you've been able to do this because it's I feel like it's impossible to be creative right now it's I I feel stunted right right I think I was starting to get a little stir crazy and missing doing comedy and the like once or twice the viral or not viral the um improv shows the zoom improv shows weren't doing it for me so I can't do them I can't do them yeah I tried um but we also we both did art smackdown yes that was a lot of fun That was really fun. I had no idea that the, were we the curators? Were you the one who chooses who won? Yeah, yeah, the judge, yeah. Yeah, I had no idea you were gonna get to pick the art. Like it was just, mine was Marilyn Monroe having a lazy day, what was yours? I saw that, yeah. Mine was uh, (laughs) to design the most embarrassing motorcycle helmet. Oh. And the one that won had a, a, a dildo in the front, an erect dildo in the front of it that said Trump on it. And then, um, uh, had like these spikes that are really like, whenever you see spikes on a motorcycle helmet, you think of like noob or novice, like someone who's, it's always like the weird, stupid, kitschy stuff that people get into when they first get into that kind of stuff. Everybody knows that. Everybody listening to this knows that. Of course, that's why I brought it up. There um, have been a lot of problems with 2020, Mm -hmm. but there has been a lot of good. I think it has shined some light on some issues, some some police brutality issues. Oh yeah, big time. and speaking of the cops. I, I, yeah, I felt the layup coming. That was a layup. <laughs> <laughs> I felt Medi- the layup, but I didn't want to be too happy about police brutality. I was no, like, we're never happy about grinning. police brutality. And that's no. something you and I would talk about even before 2020. We talked about mm, I think our- it's a whole, it's like a good, like there's a, a lot of uh, nuance to it in our pilot too. Yes. Uh, we have opinions about the way police treat people of color. 
Yeah, and you know, you know, you just lost ninety percent of your fan base because I heard they were all blue white lives supremacists. Matter people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any white supremacist. There's there's maybe one white supremacist listening to this podcast because the way I listen or not listen, I um I always go to Tommy Laren or Tommy Warren. Oh yeah, that yeah. I, I always her. go to her page and it just enrages me. Yeah, that's why um, I watch Fox News. Is like to ironically get angry. And I don't know why I do it. Why do we do it to yeah. ourselves? No, because you need to feed the feed the beast. Feed That's the beast, what it is. Yeah. White supremacists are listening to this, feeding their beasts, listening mm-hmm. to me. Sorry. Well, fuck all of you. Fuck you guys. <laughs> um, so Medi is going to share a story with us, his wild story. Um, oh, man. The word he gave me was cops. And he mm-hmm. also told me that this is the first time this story is ever being told. I've never, I've never said it out loud before because I've been too scared. Oh my God. Well, I'm so grateful that you chose my platform to share this story. Look, I'm going to need to change a couple of names and places for this one. I always say we protect the innocent and the not so innocent on this podcast. So oh, we're that, fully, fully guilty in this one. Fully that's, guilty. <laughs> that's no problem. Um, maybe <laughs> I will just let you take it away and tell oh, us boy. your story, your cop okay. story. I've never, I've never told this before. All right. Flashback, 17, 18 years old. Uh, me and my cousin, uh, God, we should give him a name. Let's call him Tony. Tony. It's not his name because he's my cousin, cousin and he's Persian. There's no, no Persian <laughs> Tonys. Got it. Um, so him and I were kind of like always troublemakers. And it's a lot of it stems from, we felt like sometimes we would get unfairly targeted when we were like mm-hmm. 17 years old, driving around 18 years old. We felt like we got like uh, stopped a lot for no reason. And so right. for that reason, we were also rebellious. So we were just feeding into the thing that was giving us trouble. And it you were 17 like, about 30, 35 years ago. Is that the same time you were? Math? That's correct. Same exact time you were. <laughs> <laughs> he still got it, people. <laughs> yeah, 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 once in a while. Uh, so, uh, you know, we were just like kind of troublemakers and we had, we didn't have a real respect for the law. We just like didn't really care about it. And one night uh, we're driving around in his, uh, oh no, we're driving in my car. I had this I mean, fucking loud Honda Civic, Mm -hmm. Honda Honda Civic, Altezza taillights, which are those clear, like shiny red taillights. I had the the green Honda logo, the really bright headlights, the loud muffler. And it was a green car. It's not like a car you hook up, but for whatever reason, it was the one one I had. So I was like, all right, I'm going to hook this car up. Yeah. So I was the kid that going to school in a school that was like mostly kids with Beamers and Mercedes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I was a kid showing up in the Honda Civic. Got it. But it was also just the loudest car. Yes, that's true. Uh-huh. <laughs> you have a Beamer now. <laughs> yeah, lo, lo, you know, an older one, but I, I'll take it. Okay. Um, uh, and so we, you know, we just felt a certain way. So one day we're driving on uh, on the road in a nearby town. God, I should name some of these towns. It don't matter. Uh, we're driving in this Jersey town, North Bergen County, Jersey town. Mm-hmm. And we're making a left turn and this car, like, I want to say a Ford Bronco, but not like OJ Ford Bronco, like a gray Ford Bronco, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, turns is turning into us as we're going straight uh, after we make this turn. And so we honk at him and give him the finger because that's just, that's the natural response Yeah. back then was like immediately was honk and finger. You lay on the horn and you give a finger. And the guy got really pissed off at us and started chasing us down the street and he pulled and he and as we're going, we're both going like 50, 60 miles an hour down the street. Yeah. He pulls up next to us and takes out a badge and says, pull the fuck over. And me and my cousin look at each other and look back at him and go, fuck you. <laughs> Give yeah. him the finger. And we hit the gas and go. Because we're like, I don't see this. Listen, I'm not recommending anybody do this. No. Like this is terrible, stupid behavior. I was 17 years old. I would never do that now. But you know, it's a story. So here we are. Um we slam on the gas, get onto this highway. And at the time, the girl that I was dating lived in this enclosed complex mm-hmm. where when you get there, it's got a gate and they got to let you in from the gate. And I knew the front door guy. So we pulled into that, told him the guy behind us had a fake badge and was chasing us. He let us in, closed it on him. Now this guy's We're- involved. Yeah, <laughs> this guy's involved. Yeah, um, go into this complex and this complex has a second entrance on the, uh, exit on the back side. Yeah. We get out from that exit, we go, it's done, gone. We got rid of the guy. Okay, good news. Um, oh, I should mention, oh yeah, so, so that's what happens there. Fast forward six months later, 
okay? My cousin and I, you know, every night was some stupid shenanigan. We would get high, we would drink, we would do something stupid. And, and we were really angry at this one particular town because of how we were treated mm -hmm. at the time. And- oh, God, Treated by the people in your school? The, the, the police your system, cousin? high school, okay. life there. Um, it was it was a complicated time. There was a a new minority that was just coming into town, and there was a lot of pushback. And mm -hmm. I was still one of the one of the minorities, so it was just you know it was it was a complicated time for that town. And it was a predominantly white town. It was initially, and then it had a huge Asian influx. Okay, and that caused tension. And then there were other people coming into the town, and that became like I think people became protective and were like, "Shit, we're losing our town." Or something. Okay, yeah. So we were angry at this town, and I was like always looking for something to do. And I, I realized I realized that the parking meters in the town, so these are the old school ones where you put a quarter and then you twist it. Okay, yeah, I remember I realized those. they're not really attached to anything. Like they're just like sitting in their hole. You know what I'm saying? So there's mm -hmm. a hole and it's got a pole that comes out and they're just kind of sitting in there. So me and my cousin are probably drunk, probably high, probably something. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I was like, we should take one of those parking meters. We should just fucking steal it. And he was like, yo, I'm in. We were so excited about this. Yeah. I knew which parking meter it was because most of them had uh, had concrete around them. Yeah. But yeah. I knew this one meter was like loose. So he's got a minivan. So we get in his minivan. We drive down to that town. Quickly pop it open. Look around for, for cameras. No, we're good. Pull it out. Throw it in the back of the minivan. This is evening. And this is nighttime, right? This is evening, yeah. Mm -hmm. And throw uh, a blanket over it. Okay, because that'll cover and we, it. And we leave. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> I mean, who's gonna guess that you have a parking meter in the back of your car? Like, no what are one. the odds of that? Look, that looks like a parking meter. Pull over. Like, it's yeah. never gonna happen. No, no, no. Um, but also, we used to, we used to. So he had a, he had a kind of minivan. I didn't want to. So many details I can't give away. He had the kind of minivan. It was very, very rare that this minivan had a fuse box in the middle of it on the dash. So if you if you know where the dash is, like your steering wheel's in front of you and behind that is the dash and it goes across the whole front underneath mm -hmm. the windshield, his would pop open and you had a little compartment there. So we used to hide our weed in there. Oh, and okay. pop that shut because nobody would, you had to know something so specific about this car to know there was drugs in there. Yeah, no, I, I didn't know cars could do that. I thought that was a hood job and I thought it was a trunk job. I didn't know it was no. a dashboard job. I thought a, a great place under the hood was in the intake. The intake is this thing where the air goes through. And then I thought, well, it's going to dry the weed out. So we never Okay, you're it. losing us. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I'll pump the brakes. I can't get away from car metaphors. Um, I know you right. can't. So we have it in the trunk. We're fucking laughing our asses off. We're yeah. high, we're driving. We're back on that same road again, but we're going a different direction. The same road ran into that cop. Yes. We're driving and mind you, at this time, I had a warrant out for my arrest. Now the warrant was, was just for not having paid some, uh, some fines for things. Sure. But, but I had, you know, I was, it was a phase I was going through where I had multiple of them back to back to back. Cause I would get a ticket and then I wouldn't pay it and a warrant be issued. Then I get a different ticket and the warrant be issued. And then I'm loving and all of a sudden your license is suspended and then they pull you over. And they, I was like, Oh, I went through hell. I've had 22 points on my license. I really went all the way to the end and oh took like, God. I've had it suspended multiple years at a time. It sounds like I'm bragging, but it was absolutely awful. It was a really, really <laughs> awful time. I was taking a lot of buses and back when taxis weren't a thing and you had to sit in the back right. with some creepy white dude driving you around. Yeah. Um, so we're driving on this road at nighttime and all of a sudden fucking sirens behind us. And we're like, what the fuck? Not right now. How is it possible? We're not breaking the law. Yeah. But we're stoned and we have drugs in the car. And there is a parking meter in the back of the car. Like, so it's a minivan where all the seats were taken out. So it's clearly used for cargo. Right. So we get pulled over and, and a cop walks up and he goes, you idiots remember me? <gasps> and I was like, what? What are you talking about? He's like, I'm the fucking guy. The guy you fucking said, fuck you. And I was like, oh God, no. We He's got pulled waiting. over by the cop that we flipped off yeah. like six months earlier, driving a totally different car. He saw us in the car and was like, those fuckers, yeah. and pulled us over. I was absolutely shitting my pants. I was so scared. Yeah. He, before he even asks for license registration, 
he tells me, I'm, I'm in the passenger seat this time. I was in the driver's seat last mm-hmm. time. He says, you get out of the car. Oh God. And I was like, fuck. He's like, he's like, come with me. He walks me to his car, opens the back door of his car and puts me in and closes it. <laughs> Bye, Mitty. <laughs> That's it. No cuffs, no nothing. I don't know if anyone's ever been in the back of a cop car, particularly with cuffs on. It's it's incredibly painful because they cuff you together, and then the back of the cop car is so small, you're sitting on the actual cuffs the whole time. And it's plastic seats, right? Plastic seats, and also the the, the thing in front of you. Yeah, it's like pl- like vinyl covering on the seats. Mm. But the thing in front of you, it's like when you get into a yellow cab. It's got that big barrier, but it's much closer to you, so the cops are able to push their seat back. Yeah. So you got no room in front of you either. Luckily, I was I, this time I wasn't cuffed. I was just sitting there, and I was like, the guy didn't cuff me. He didn't read me my rights. He just put me in the back of the cop car. Maybe like, there's somewhere you can write, like, you know, where they can improve the back seats of cop cars. You know, my stay in the back seat of this cop car was- Oh, leave reviews un- for them? Yeah. Yeah, leave a review. <laughs> very uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, I'd have plenty of them, unfortunately. <laughs> so I was like, this guy doesn't play by the fucking rules, man. We are fucked. Yeah. He's, he, not only is he going to tax our asses, but he's going to really screw us. Um, he walks back over to my cousin- and I remember before, well, before I got out of the car, I told my cousin, I was like, I have, a, I have a warrant out for my arrest. Surprise. Like, this guy's gonna, so like I had a warrant out. We had the, the, the meter and for the town that he works in, by the way, we took the meter from that town. So I wasn't sure if they had had a notice go around that says we're missing a parking meter. If anyone <laughs> sees it, keep your eyes peeled. And we were fucking scared. Cause at the time we didn't have a real understanding. Of, I mean, we should be scared. We stole st- like a, a municipal property. Yeah. But for I was what? like, oh, for $20 in quarters. No, we were, and well, I guess we were going to take the change out of it if we could, but like, that wasn't the plan. Oh. The plan See, was just like, fuck them, we're taking, a, no, we're just taking, we're taking a meter. But yeah, we'll get to the change. <laughs> <laughs> All I see is dollar signs. <laughs> we got the meter, um, baby. <laughs> yeah, what's going to, I mean, honestly though, right, like what's going to be in there, like $20 worth of change. Mm. Um, okay, so he has me in the back of the cop car and I see him flashing the light into the minivan and look in the scene, what's under there. And he uh, pulls my cousin out of the car, uh, starts giving him a hard time, asking him a bunch of questions. It was fair, you know? Mm-hmm. And then he comes back to the car and he lets me out of the car. And he says, he, he writes him a ticket for something. And he says, you guys aren't allowed on this fucking road anymore. I don't want to ever see you again here. And we were like, great, great. Thank God we're good. Yeah. We don't care. He didn't look in the back. He didn't see the meter. He didn't find any drugs. I was like, I was like thank you so much. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. We'll never drive here again. It was like the main road in our town. I was going to drive on that road again. Yes. Um, and so we, we get back in his car and we drive to his house and we're shitting our pants and we're relieved and we're like, okay, like, we, I mean, the first thing we did was like throw the drugs out. Like, you know, that panic right yeah, after panic. you almost got caught. Yeah. Yes. You yes. go and dig it back up again later, but you throw it out somewhere, you know, you're going to pick it up again later. Yeah. We get to his house and we're like, we have to get rid of this fucking parking meter. Like we have, like, what are we going to do with it now? <laughs> Where are we going to keep it? <laughs> yeah, you can't keep How is no thing. one ever going to find it? Like, mm-hmm. as, so we get to his house and he's got like a basement. So we, we pull it out and get it into his basement. And we're like trying to figure out what to do with it. And his fucking dad walks in and he's like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> he's pissed. Yeah. He's, he's pissed and he knows exactly what, he knows immediately yeah. what we did. And, and like the good Persian father he is, he said, you guys are going to need vinegar and you're going to need bleach. Stay here. So he goes upstairs, <laughs> he gets the vinegar, he gets yeah. the bleach, he gets a, a towel. He helps us wipe down this whole entire thing. And he says, put it back in the car, go to this river. This is where you're going to dump it and then come back here. So literally, and it, you know, I don't know if you know, I don't know if you've ever lifted one of these before, but they're heavy. No, no it's on my to-do list, but I was <laughs> going to wait. I was going to wait. Um, it's incredibly heavy. So we both had to go. Yeah. So, so we get in the car and we drive to this other town where these series of like little man-made lakes and, uh, and hurl it as far as we can. It makes an enormous splash because it's incredibly heavy. We never got the money those in it either. Oh, well, um, Because we were too scared. We were too scared to even try to open it. We were just like, we got to get rid of this thing. Yeah, that's where the chain shortage is. Party, parking meters at the bottom of man-made lakes. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm so, one day someone's going to find that and connect it to this story. <laughs> I was thinking about this while you're telling it. The Statue of Limitations, that's a thing, yes. right? 
So yeah, statute of limitations. We're past I, that because this was like 40 I, I years ago. I assume it's two years, but I also don't know. I don't know like... Also, I still live near that town. Like, I don't need to get taxed by them whenever I go in, into town now. You know what I mean? All right. Now you're giving too many details. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, it's... hey, guys, I live right next to the police station <laughs> of the town. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to arrest myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just put the cuffs on. I'll wait for you guys to show up. Yeah. Give me a nice roomy crown Vic. <laughs> Um, and, and, and that's, that's the first time I've ever told that, but that's it. That's, that's how that ended. We got rid of it. We never saw it again. And we never, wow. we, and we swore to each other. We're never going to tell anyone the story. We're going to take it to the grave. And we never told anybody. And that was 17 years ago now or 18 years ago. Wow. Medi. Yeah. I don't even know where to, did you get permission from him to tell this? No, I haven't even told him yet. <laughs> I'm going I'm to tell him later and be like, hey, I, I didn't say your name. I yeah. changed some details. Yeah. Wow, Mehdi. I feel like I have like kind of an anxiety pain in my chest hearing that. Oh, it's because it's cops were involved. Yes. I My yeah. experience <laughs> with the cops, I mean, we've talked about cops multiple mm. times. Oh, at um, length, at length. At length. But my experience with the cops because of the way I look on my solo adventures in life have always been like, you're good, blah, blah, blah. It's so funny that you've had that, that duality. That's so crazy to me. Right. And then a million times been in the car with my dad who just gets treated like absolute, who, who was treated like absolute shit with, by the cops. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've been you're in the like car an, with You're me. like an undercover white person. Like undercover I am. An, person. I am. <laughs> that should be the title of your autobiography. <laughs> undercover brother. But cross out the brother and write sister. Right sister. <laughs> I would love you should totally do that. Because that that's your be life experience. That that shit is wild to me. Yeah, it is. And I think I would t I would just know, hey, the police treat people of color different. Mm -hmm. And that was just something you know I've known since I was three years old. So you're able when you're able to comprehend it, you're like, they treat people of color differently. Well, people treat black people men. of color different. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So how mm -hmm. why wouldn't that translate? That's also like an argument that I think isn't made enough. Like there is microaggressions every day. Like they right. regularly treat them differently. Why would you think that would stop at the police? Why wouldn't it cross that line? You know? Yeah. Cause it's in, and the police specifically are an institution that were, you know, built on racism. So I, if you go back to the history, shit is insane. The reason yeah. for it, the reason we even have police is, is crazy. So there are sometimes, I mean, <clears throat> there are sometimes when I've thought like, if I had to call the police for something there, there's a big part of me. That's like, I don't know if I feel safe. I mean, like I would never want, if I, if I had some, you know what I mean? Like I just get nervous. Yeah. There's, uh, I try to keep them out of most things. I, I caught a guy breaking into my car one time, mm -hmm. uh, literally caught him while he was breaking into my car. Right. And I didn't call the cops. I just took his driver's license from him. And I told him like, I, I know where you live and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but like, I, I never called the cops on him because I, I I probably should have because he went out yeah. and bothered the people. But at the time, I was much younger, and I was like, I was like, we keep the cops out of this. You like, grabbed him by the neck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, literally, you grabbed, grabbed him by yeah. the neck, and we're like, I put parking meters bigger than you in rivers. Don't <laughs> with me. <laughs> Do not. You don't want to end up with a meter did swimming with the fishes. Oh my god! Yeah, it's scary. So I'm hoping I'm. I'm feeling the wheels of change turning, but I mean, you can't sleep on it. I, you know what, this, it feels like this happens every, every handful of years. Yeah. I feel like there are movies that you watch about this kind of stuff in the seventies and eighties and nineties and aughts, and they're making more of them now. Mm -hmm. And it just feels like a cycle where it's like, it's such incremental change. Yeah. And it's just like 10 steps forward, nine steps back. Yeah. Is how it feels, you know? Yeah. And Which those 10 steps are fucking be, hard. Mathematically, that'd be one step forward. Which is not your strong suit. So I'm glad you got that. <laughs> Math <laughs> is my strong suit. You know, I is love it? numbers. I love numbers. I'm actually an arithma. Can maniac. you do fast math? Do you, fa yeah. you do fast math? Okay, yeah, let's do me. something. <laughs> okay. Um, 27 times 16. 27 times 16. Okay. That would be. 270, 135, that's 305. This is the most 16, interesting podcast ever. 305 plus 16. I'm sorry if you're listening to this. 
Don't distract She's me. She's almost Is that done. 321? Is it 321? Wow. No. No, it's not. What is it? It's 432. Okay, give me another one. <laughs> <laughs> Is this what you want your listeners to have? Okay, they know um, what they signed up for. This is the 11th episode. <laughs> they know what they signed up for. Give me another okay, one. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, 37 times uh, 22. You love picking odd numbers. Okay. 30... 22 is a real easy one. Okay, yes. Okay, 37 times 22. And 37 is only one number away from being even. <laughs> <laughs> 37 times Your 22 brain exploded for would a moment. be... 370, 370, that's 740, 22. Oh, I'm so sorry, <laughs> Wait, you made me mess up. Okay, 370, 370. I hope you don't edit this down to be shorter because. <laughs> you keep messing me up. 30, okay, 370, <laughs> 370 plus 27. Oh, man, you're going about this the weirdest way. Okay, wait, what was the numbers I'm working with again? 37 and 22. 37 and 22. I'm not writing this down. This is strictly for my brain. 37 plus 22, 370, 370. That's 740, 22. Great. Okay. <laughs> I saw you lose it. I saw you lose it. Because I keep forgetting the numbers. I, I hope people me. watch this back on YouTube and see the moment <laughs> the light goes out in your eyes. I can tell exactly what it happened. 370, that's 740. Plus 37 oh, would be God, this is so, seven, such bad podcast. 77. <laughs> this is the worst thing a listener can 70, ask for. 87. It's 814. Yes. Oh my God. Great job. Okay. I is know really? you're going to edit this down. Yeah, that's correct. I know you're going to pare this down. It literally took you a minute to do it. Okay. So, but could you do it without, you know? Yeah. And I'm, I'm talking to everyone. It. I'm not going to do it now because I think it's an awful idea. <laughs> <laughs> but that was pretty good. And it you was, talked through all my math. Yeah, I did talk through all your math, yeah. So, I mean, people didn't know they were signing up for math, but... No, you should definitely preface it. You should write it in the description so they know. I used to write on my resume when I would go to auditions. I had on Speaking my resume... Speaking police. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you hear it in the background? Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> they already uh, heard our episode. They're coming for you. Yeah, they're um, on the way. No, it's the police station is right there. It's constant. Oh, so you feel safe and also terrified at the same time? I, yeah, I, I think it's mostly terrified. The other day there was a guy at my corner with his straight up ass out, ass out, pants under okay. his ass. Um, he was like, no mat. His mask was hanging down off his face. Was, oh, that was the issue. The mask, not his ass. <laughs> that was an issue too. And he was spitting everywhere and just like running into traffic. And I saw a oh, cop God. walk out of the deli because I was watching him. So I just watch out the window all day. But yeah, um, sure you do. I watched the cop look at this guy who's obviously like needing a little assistance. Um, sure. And he just kind of put his hand up and kept walking. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, courtesy, professionalism, and respect. And also, I saw a meme that said, if cops were supposed to protect and serve, then how come they don't give out um, lights when they pull somebody over for a broken taillight and help <laughs> them fix point. it? I, yeah. that, that really resonated with me. Yeah, absolutely. That really I once got a, a, a light out ticket for double parking. I don't know. There's that would be a whole other podcast. I should just do a podcast on interactions with police. Yeah, <laughs> that's such a downer. It's such yeah. a downer. I don't think this has been a downer though. I think this has no. been um, very very fun. Yeah, I'm sweating because I told that story. That's all right. You're going to be fine. There's a statute of limitations. The amount yep. of work that people would have to do to figure this out. It just out. feels like it just feels like when when something's like you know I beat somebody up that feels mm -hmm. like okay statute of limitations but if, when you fuck with like state property or something like that it feels like they could be like no nah, uh, no you're still liable you know like I'll tell you this Medi if this will make okay. you feel a little bit better sure, there sure. was one time I was going to Mesquamacit Beach does say that out again it's called Mesquamacit Beach it's is in, that definitely in, in Connecticut it's in Rhode Island or right outside Connecticut or right out sounds outside. right yeah and we were driving and it was two cars of friends so two cars of friends driving my friend in front of us had an asthma attack oh my god while she was driving oh my god so we pull 
over into the town of East Lyme and an ambulance comes and, uh, you know, they come and get her and we follow her to the hospital and they take us to this really quiet hospital. And I'm 16 years old at the time. And so I say to my friend, and our friend was fine. She just needed a little oxygen. Sure, sure. And so I say to my other friends that were there, I'm like, well, while we're here, let's look at the babies. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, as you do. <laughs> so- <laughs> When you go to the mall, you're like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass by the front of Zales and just see what they have. Yeah, it was very similar to window shopping at Zales. I said, sure. I want to look at the babies. And I thought, again, you're, I was 16 years old, so it was just about 10 years ago. And, yeah, um, roughly. Same roughly for me. Eight, it was about eight years ago. And, uh, so, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I'm 24. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so we like march through this hospital that's empty pretty much. And I'm like, where's the baby section? You know, let's go see the (laughs) section. Let's go see the newborn. (laughs) (laughs) And yeah. And nobody was checking on us. Nobody was like making sure that like being like, Hey, you guys don't belong here. And then we just saw somebody laying on a gurney in the hallway. As people do in hospitals though. Right right but totally unattended totally like just there in the hallway i've seen them just put people out in the hallway i've seen that at hospitals right like someone just on their own sitting in a hallway well i'm sure us doing that was also illegal so now we're even my crime that that was your wait (laughs) because you went and saw the babies never found the babies never saw the never found the babies right um so I'm saying that my crime that I just admitted to you is just as bad as your crime. Oh, that was your way of making me feel bad. Okay. <laughs> well, didn't work. <laughs> Not even a little bit. Not I'll even be okay. a little. I think I'll be okay. I, I, I have to call my my cousin friend later, Tony. I didn't use his name at all. No, but to call Tony later. Definitely Tony. And honestly, Mehdi, if for some reason this is not okay, okay. you let me know before the episode airs. I think and- you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> the police knocking the door oh i hear you're not a fan of us powell <laughs> you think they're gonna find out before the episode airs no i'm saying to you if you find out like if you're like hey i'm actually not cool oh with if this, i like let consult. me know yeah. and then I hear you, you have a million wild night stories you can tell me yeah. um well Medi, i really miss you i've only seen you once this whole I miss year you too. i um, know i know we've had a couple of phone dates but you and jamie your wife you came to the park to visit me with a couple yeah, that was fr- such a fun day that was such a fun day but that was yeah. the last time are I you saw still having you. window visitors um i yes <laughs> i had a, a window what, 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 i had what, one window <laughs> visitor recently but other than that not too many window visitors okay <laughs> <laughs> i did have a window visitor recently though <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, I can't wait till we can hang out again. I know, that'll be really fun. It's coming um, soon. For anyone, I feel really confident. It's coming, it's coming really soon. Are I think in a few months. Are you excited about getting vaccinated? A lot of the people I'm talking to are very scared about getting vaccinated. Really? Yeah. People being scared of getting vaccinated scares me. My gram has been vaccinated But today. I'm not scared of getting no, vaccinated. Oh, great. Good yeah. for you. Yeah, she oh, got that's vaccinated great news. today. Um, and then, yeah, I think my brother is going to be eligible, is eligible to get vaccinated. And uh, That's awesome. You know, a few friends have been vaccinated. I feel like that to me is the light at the end of the tunnel. Absolutely. And that's why I feel like it's coming. I mean, you know, uh, I don't know what the statistic is if we had like 3% of people vaccinated or something like that. But once we, I think once we get to a certain amount, you know, it's, I don't know why I'm trying to be Dr. Anthony Fauci right now. I think we'll be okay in a few months. Okay. Yeah, same. I don't know. You trying to be Fauci was like me trying to do that math. Yeah. Except I did it well. No. <laughs> <laughs> Nettie, where can people find you on social media? How can they follow you? What's coming up for you? Talk to us. Oh, about okay. That. Um, on uh, social media. Good luck spelling my name. This is something I didn't think through when I started my brand. Uh, Medi Varekshi is my name. It's my Instagram handle. It's where you can probably find me. Mm-hmm. Um, and for stuff coming out, uh, what am I in that's going to be here? Oh, I- I'm in um, um, Modern Love season two. I'll be in an episode of that. That's which airs, great news. I don't know when. Yeah, I shot that during COVID and it was an unbelievable experience to shoot during COVID. How, how so? Um, 
so we shot in Schenectady, New York, which mm -hmm. is upstate New York. People don't know. It's like two, three hours north of the city. Um, they test you twice, uh, once, uh, twice, uh, one week apart each. Mm -hmm. And then, so I'm sorry, they test you. And then the following week, they test you again. And then the day after that test, they test you again. Okay. And the following day, they bring you up. I was and for like anyone who for... might not know what testing is, will you just tell people what that is? Yeah, it's COVID. So it's oh, test testing. Oh, I thought you meant screen <laughs> testing. <laughs> no, I should have been clear. I should have been clear. Like yeah. he's using a lot of like biz lingo. Yeah, and insider. Just, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, this is COVID testing. Got it. Um, so they, they bring you up. And once they bring you up, uh, I was only shooting for a couple of days, but they brought me up there for nine days because mm -hmm. they want to get you away from everybody and into their kind of like hands. Mm -hmm. So you get up there, they put you in a hotel room. They put me in a hotel room like Saturday night. Um, I didn't have to get to wardrobe till Tuesday and okay. I didn't shoot till Thursday and Friday. So literally I spent most of the time in the hotel because they wanted to just keep me from interacting with family and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they tested me every single day. Good. And every day you're on set, you get a rapid test. And when you get there, it's like a, it's like a quarantine zone. It's unbelievable. You get yeah. there and there's security everywhere. You can't get through. And uh, the way you get through is they, they scan your head. They check a list to make sure you're there. You mm -hmm. go to the first line where they swab you, the second line where they do a second thing, and then the third line. And then they take you, you have to sit in your trailer for like 40 minutes until they have a confirmed negative rapid test. Wow. And then they say, okay, you're good to work. They give you a box. And in the it's like a Tupperware box that's maybe like two feet wide and two feet, like two by two or something. And it's got just a ton of PPE in it. It's okay. got alcohol wipes hand sanitizer, a bunch of surgical masks. Oh, and they don't let you wear your own mask. When you get there, they tell you to take off your mask and put on a surgical. Okay. Um, and then everyone who's there, everyone's wearing a mask. And, and everyone has, uh, if you have glasses, you have a little shield on the ends of your glasses to cover the sides as well. Good, because the spit but everyone's controls, got, yeah. Yeah, so everyone's got a mask and a shield on. I'm sorry, uh, a face mask and like a glasses type thing on. Mm. Everyone does. Good. And for talent, which is crazy, I, the scene that I shot was with a bunch of kids, like 20, 30 kids. So mm -hmm. it was like, I was going to be pretty close to a lot of them. But for those of us who, who are on camera, they have us go to makeup and they have you remove your mask to do makeup. And then they give you a face shield that connects from under your neck. So it's like a thing that wraps around your neck. And then from the bottom, it protrudes up to protect your face. Mm. And you're just walking around with this weird shield the rest of the day. So you I've could tell who was on that. camera from that. It's wild. And yeah. the craziest thing is you're there, you're being safe. They set you up, they set up the scene, they light it, you block it, blah, blah, blah. And then they're like, okay, masks off. And everybody takes their mask off. Mm -hmm. And then they say action. And all of a sudden you're in, I'm in this room with like 25 kids and I'm shouting at them. Yeah. And we don't, we're not wearing, it's like the craziest thing, all that safety so that we can have this one minute of maskless, whatever. Me, yeah. um, I don't know if I'm going on too long, but this no, is one other thing I want to say quickly. Please, they have these zones. It's zone A, B, and C. And zone A is like actors and blah, blah, blah. Zone B is like producers and directors and zone mm -hmm. C is crew. Um, and zone A can never intercross with zone B and zone B can never intercross with zone C. So when you're on set, I never have contact with crew. Ooh. I only have contact. I'm sorry, directors are also in zone A. I only have contact with directors and actors. Wow, okay. Zone B which is producers, they only have contact with one another. So it's kind of crazy. I mean, they're spending tons of money, but it seems like the only things that are getting made are the big studio stuff. Cause that was for Amazon. Yeah. So I think those are the guys that have the money to be able to test everybody and do all this stuff. Cause if someone uh, shows up with a positive test, they just figure out who they've interacted with based on the zones and stuff. Mm -hmm. They call all those people out, tell them to stay home for two weeks and they bring in a whole new section of crew to take over for that part. Wow. Yeah, it's wild. It's really wild. It's fascinating to see it in person. And I this was back in like, um, I think September or something. Yeah. The question everybody would probably want to know was, how was the food on set? The food was, was really, really good. Good. The food was really good. I've had really good experience with food on set. Yeah. That's great. That's everyone's question. <laughs> It is that your mine. question? That was mine. <laughs> the food's amazing. You know, it's great if, if they're going on for too long and lunch hasn't come. Catering usually will like put together a bunch of stuff on a plate and come around and like hand it to everybody. Ooh, yeah. Really I would glamorous. go to set just for that. I love food. Oh, yeah. But then when you're there, you're so self-conscious that you're fat. Yeah. That you're like, fuck, I can't eat any of this shit because we're about to shoot it. 
So I end up having half cookies when I'm on, on set and lots of coffee. Oh man, I wish I had that. I'm like, oh, I'm happy. Like just sitting on the couch, eating, eating, eating. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> so I, I'm the I same thing. The that was, about... that was one, one week of my life in the yeah. last, since last March. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Literally, it's been this, this, me, me and the computer screen. I love that show. I watched the first season in one sitting. Oh yeah. Modern Love. Yeah, it was really good. I, I have to watch. I haven't seen it yet. I just watched the trailers for it. Oh my God. You guys should watch it. The episode it, like, I'm in is fantastic. Yeah. I read the script and the script is unbelievable. It's really good. It's just these vignettes of, you know, moments in New York and love stories in New York. I absolutely loved it. So I'm excited to see your episode. When do you think that'll premiere? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the thing that, that you never know. You never yeah. know. What's like I shot Undoing in 2017 and it aired in 2020. Mm. You know, like you never know. Right. Well, so say again where everybody can follow you, Medi, so they can catch you when you're on Modern Love and all the other projects that you do. Just on, on Instagram, Medi Barakchian. On Instagram. Yep, M-E-H-D-I, and then type in B, and then hopefully I show up. And hopefully we're not visiting you in the clink. Hopefully not, but if I do, <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure that someone posts my, from my Instagram for you guys. <laughs> okay. Medi, this was the best. I'm so glad you I came on. I loved it. I love so you. So good to see your face. I love you. All right, we'll talk soon. Bye, Maddie. Bye. Bye.